Hi everyone, I'm gonna do a quick little teaser video on painting flowers. Um, and the reason I'm doing it before I actually, well, you can watch them in whatever order, but I'm making it before I do the, uh, the third video for the red poppy is because as I was kind of making the last few petals for the red poppy that I was gonna assemble with you, I started thinking about those, those poppies that have that sort of red, like that sort of black sort of circle in the center like this one. I was thinking how cool that is, right? Here's my low-tech, high-tech. Oh, wait, there's way too much glare on this. Low-tech, high-tech. Let's see, how much glare do we have on this thing? Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't be using all that. So, i got to figure out how to do the lighting so that you can actually see it. Oh, my goodness, I am definitely low-tech, high-tech. Um, so, anyhow, I was looking at this one, and there might be glare, can't see, because the way my setup is, I can't really see what's being shown on the camera. Anyhow, back to the matter at hand. So I was looking at ones like this, right? And seeing these, like, kind of black circles. Now, and I was thinking, how cool, and then they can be any kind of shape, right? They can be kind of just blobular, like that one, you know, kind of more straight out. Look at these cool centers, too. Poppies are so much fun. So I was thinking, okay, well... I have never actually tried that before. Now I have actually tried doing shading, my own shading with ones, um, like doing the whole flower. Like I did this one, for example, and this one is, whoops, sorry, is in fact, um, these were the same color. These aren't the same flower. You can obviously see from the centers, the same exact flower, but these were the same exact beads that I used one for the other. And this was me just painting kind of the whole thing with a darker kind of shades of black, gray, and even brown in there. There's a lot of colors in that, believe it or not. And I really liked the way it came out, but for some reason I never did that sort of center thing. So I figured, huh, I'm gonna give that a try. And, um, and I tried, by the way, various um, amounts of that, right? So I did ones where I had it look like this, um, and so I had a darker one and a lighter one. These were both the same bright, bright. That's that one that you just saw. And then the one next to it that I finally ended up painting. So that was the, that was the one that was the before picture actually. So, um, so, and this is actually a painted lily up here and we'll talk about painting lilies in a second. So anyhow, I was like, why don't I try that on the one I already assembled, even though it's going to be a pain in the neck then to paint it, um, to seal it but I'll have to worry about that later. I haven't done it yet. I'm gonna have to put like aluminum foil around the, the center. But I was so happy with the way it came out. It looks like this. I think it's pretty darn cool. I think it came out pretty cool. So you can still see the, the sides and I did a little brush of that. That's not black and then you can see the underside um, where it's kind of, it's a super dark warm gray right? Because I wanted to have some control over it. And the reason I've tried it before with beads, but you get a hard line there and it's kind of hard to control with the, all the scalloping too, how it's going to work. And it never just looked how I kind of wanted it to look um, in terms of getting that sort of round little arch there. And so, and I wanted like a feathery edge. So I don't know if you can see that that well here, but because of the way I painted, I get a little feathery edge here. So, and this is kind of one way to paint where you're just kind of doing an accent sort of painting. So here we're going to talk about the teaser aspect of what I was talking about, which is that you can use the painting to do very light things, very just simple little accent things. Like, for example, these lilies. I wanted to have, um, I just dropped them on their heads, so hopefully they look okay. I wanted these to have, these are all the same color. They're this uh, semi-frosted uh, white color lined bead. And I wanted them to have all the same sort of color to them. Uh, I mean, they're all the same color, but I wanted them to each have sort of a green inside to stretch out like that. I like that. It looks a lot more contrasty here. It's a lot lighter in person. I can actually see on the edge. It looks a little bit bright, but um, it's way less contrasty. I think I've posted pictures of those at some point. And that's because, again, I was looking for um, something that looked kind of like, you know, one of these in real life. You know, I wanted that sort of situation going on. And so that's what I made. So you can use um, them to sort of do accents. Here's another one where, um, I think I showed you some Morning Glories before, but here's a different, this is on a color lined Morning Glory. These are all turquoise. And then I sort of put a little bit of a purple. It's really coming out high contrast though, I can see that. So it looks a lot brighter. It's actually more subtle in real life. Um, so I put a purple on it 
and uh, with a different, you know, I mix a lot of colors, so it's not always, it's never the same thing. But then you get this sort of, you know, sort of effect to it, right? And you can get more of a feathering to it. Um, so, again, you can go for accent sort of painting, and then you can go full on, I'm going to change the entire situation. Like, here's one I just made tonight while I put it together. These are leftover from a hydrangea. Now, I didn't make a hydrangea this color. These were actually... Um, I knew that they were going to be left over, so I left them their original color and painted them a brighter color. So um, here's one of our big fluffy mums. It's kind of a weird little arrangement because this is so top heavy, but I've had this around forever and I was like, what am I going to do with it? And so I decided to put it in with these guys. So this, these were all actually super light gray, sometimes called black diamond. Um, these are from Aura, this particular one. Uh, and they call it transparent matte, matte light gray AB. So the entire flower was this color, the entire flower, including the little center bead. So, which is an eight. Um, so these are what I'm making my hydrangeas out of. But this is definitely not a hydrangea color. I painted these a different color on purpose because I wanted to try something new. Um, the hydrangeas with the painting came out really cool, but I kind of still work in progress on those. So anyhow, so this was a complete color change. You can see that. And in fact, and it, on the AB, you get this sort of satiny, almost iridescent finish. Um, and in fact, here's some ones that are left over from the hydrangea too, which these were also that silver, that light gray color. So, and they completely changed these, right? And these actually were one of the hydrangea colors. This is a lighter blue one. And then I did a periwinkle blue one. So these were actually two different, um, hydrangea flowers, florets from them. And then say, for example, this one too, like these, um, are kind of cool, uh, I'm going to put those with that in something that got a little crinkly, but these were all that ivory that we used for the, that I used for the pussy willow, the 147 F. And then I did kind of a darker color down here and kind of ombre it up. And it kind of makes this kind of cool color out of them. And so that again would be you know, like an accent. Like you can use it for something little where like you're putting a dot on your poppies. So anyway, that's our little teaser part. Um, or you can go full on, for example, for example, Oh, this color, this is, is going to be a hydrangea soon. This is a bare hydrangea. It hasn't been written yet. This is the 147F, which I haven't tried yet with hydrangea, so I'm excited to do that. So I'm going to paint these, and I really like these, so I'm probably going to, this color, as you know, if you've heard me before, so I'm probably not going to put too much paint, just my little highlights in the middle. We'll see. But then I ended up um, making uh, saucer magnolia petals. These actually came out too dark. Um, but this was this bead. So these were all that color. So you can use it to do a complete color change, right? And in fact, I did, those were a little bit darker than I wanted. Um, so, but these were ones that came out closer to how I wanted. They're still darker. I'm going to do another batch, but you can see, you can control, huh, control like a grade on it. You can ombre it, right? So this is about well, probably six different paint colors because normally I like to mix paints when I paint like a normal person, like on, you know, a canvas or something. Um, but here it's sometimes easier to mix on the actual. Now this one got really dark. I haven't shaped them yet and I just dropped them. Um, so you can see the sort of way you can completely control because this, these were entirely this color all the way down. There's only one bead used there. And so for those I was going for that, I know around where I live, up here in Northern California, we have these super deep pink, almost purpley, um, sometimes called tulip magnolia, sometimes called sausage, saucer magnolia. I almost said sausage magnolias, which is not an appealing idea. Not that they, you know, I like sausage well enough, but sausage magnolia does not sound good. I think I actually even took a picture or saved a picture of that. So I was going for like this kind of thing, right? I was going, I'm sorry about the glare. One day I'll get high tech and just be high tech, high tech instead of high tech, low tech or low tech, high tech. So I was going for this kind of color right here, right? So, and I think it did pretty well, but more on the saucer magnolias later. Oops, I think I just blocked with my hand. That's hilarious. I was trying to block the, okay, I'm not going to restart just for that. But anyhow, so I was going for that color. And so it's a really hard bead to find. And I've done that before with beads and I, I will never uh, disclaimer here I want to be really clear 
nothing's ever going to replace actually just shading with beads because I love those little blobs of glass. So this is just, you know, kind of a further, like, what can you do with them kind of thing, right? Um, it's not, this is the only thing I want to do with them. In fact, here, let's see if I have a picture. See, here's one of ones that I would do with shading with beads. So I'm not trying to say just paint. In fact, I love shading with beads. I just don't, you know, I just don't want to get stuck with just that one thing. So I like doing kind of a bunch of different ones, right? Here's, you can see the shading on that one. So you can keep shading with beads and just have this as being kind of a fun kind of side effect. I'm really trying not to hit the glare and I'm sure I am. So you can see the shading. So anyhow, that's my disclaimer. Cause I want people to think I'm, oh, she only does painting and she never works with her beads. No, both, but again, and then you can do a total changeover, like this big old peony, right? This one's been around forever. This one was also that 147F, and um, this was an early one, and I was not very good, so I messed up. So, um, like, a lot of times I got a little cakey because I realized that you mix, um, well, I'll save the hints for later, but I mixed more opaque alcohol inks in there that made it a little cakier it's okay i mean it's cool but again it's kind of cool because it was just that it was this color and then i just wanted to see what would happen you know we're kind of using an ombre on it and i of course with this one you would want to paint the components beforehand and so let's see last thing i was going to say is oh yeah and so I was got also into making a bunch of violets um, <laughs> before this month, kind of a different pattern, well, my own pattern, though I love seeing those cute little ones that y'all have been posting. Those have been awesome. Um, and I love that little pattern. But these were a slightly different ideas. So I was doing ones where I was uh, only doing them in the super lightest, the lightest amethyst um, uh, AB matte transparent and also... This was all the components, you know, I made a bunch of them. And then um, I did it with uh, that, that light gray that I just showed you also. So here's how those turned out. I haven't taken photos of them. I can show those to you live because I kind of um, put those aside and haven't been dealing with them after Hydrangea Palooza, um, which seriously, if you could, <laughs> yeah, a lot, I have a lot of hydrangeas. Okay, you go sit down. Oh, oh I forgot about you. Okay. So come back, here we go. Oh no, I'm dropping violets everywhere. I feel like I'm in um, Willy Wonka. Violet, you're turning violet, violet. Um, okay, so these were those. Um, and they also got, and then these have been sprayed with a, I think he did a, I have my husband do it, the satin. There's satin finish um, sealant, you just get clear spray paint, satin, um, gloss, and matte right so these I think I asked them to do satin with them so you can see all the different colors that you can get with it um it's pretty darn cool so I did a bunch of different and you can get the soft gradation so here's all my violets where I was just these were my like tester violets just having fun you know like all different color patterns and things you know trying to look I was looking at you know pictures online in my book encyclopedias of all the different varieties um I really love this one this is like four different colors even though you can't tell but it's kind of neat you know, so there's all of these are probably, you know, the least three, probably up to seven colors each. So you can have fun with it, right? You can do it. And these AB finish really takes well to it. I like this one a lot, but it's different than the other. So I'm not going to put it with it, but I'm going to make a whole one just of this because I love that the wine color and going away from the ruin. There's a bunch of those actually in California, that color. So I was like, that's cool. So I'm doing a little series called California Fields. Um, I think I'm on number five now, but anyhow, so this is, again, this is all just from using the alcohol inks. Now, and again, like I said, this is a little teaser. We're going to do a slight demo because I'm going to show you how I did it on the poppy ones, which is just an accent one. So it's just one color and I'm doing sort of, I'd almost say a cheater method, except it's a good method, um, depending on what you need to do. So that's what these look like. These are my violets. And again, just to be real clear, I still love making shading violets. In fact, shading violets is one of my favorite things to do. I think I have, let's see. Oh, come back over here, little guy. So you can also, you know, shading them's cool. 
Let me see if I can block this. There we go. So there's some that are shaded. This is an old bouquet. I haven't seen this one. Well, it's long gone. But um, there's that one. And then let's see. I don't know why I did. And then so here's a bunch I made, and they're all different kind of shaded with beads. Now, why am I doing this saying this? Because I honestly, I'm not trying to... I, I think, you know, experimenting with the bead shading is just as much fun as painting. But that being said, they have their places. Now, back to the matter at hand. Let's do a quick little demo of these guys. Um, so you can see what I mean by kind of an easy way to start. Now, I'm going to do a more detailed starter. This is just the teaser. Oh, this is one of my early, early ones. Look at this thing. I don't know, this, this Dahlia, this thing. It's, um, it's been around, though. The poor thing is just falling apart. But <laughs> I don't even know what I was aiming for with it. It's just almost garish, I think is the word. Gaudy certainly comes to mind. I mean, it has its moments. It's pretty. But it's been around for a long time. Because this was, you can tell if you look at this, I just did not know what the heck I was doing. I'm not claiming to know like a ton right now. But I know more than anything. Ouchie. <laughs> um, anyhow. So, uh, yeah, that one's kind of funny. Um, I mean, if you look at that, say, for example, and again, I'm not even remotely claiming to be, oh, this one came along a little later. This was a mistake, Dahlia, because I made a bunch of tester pieces and forgot that I had made extra pieces. So when I assembled, I assembled all of them. And so it's like a pineapple Dahlia, which is not a thing, but this is a thing. Look at this thing. It's like a double layer Dahlia. I, I just kept making it and I wasn't thinking, you know, and <laughs> anyhow, what are you going to do? So um, that one was actually uh, made from actually this bead that's on here right now, which is a gold line opal. So this entire thing was this bead um, in the beginning, a gold lined opal bead. But um, yeah, that, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that at all. I like my leaves though. Um <laughs> I mean, I kind of like the color. It's this really soft sort of bunch of different weird colors, but I don't know what to do with this thing. It's about the weight of a bowling ball. So anyway, trials and tribulations in the world of painting flowers. Um, and actually in the world of beaded flowers, period. So back to the matter at hand. I really like the way this came out. I'm super stoked on it. I love the little things on the, you know... And when I say that, I do not remotely mean that egotistically because to me, this is a happy accident because I did not know what was going to happen. So I was just like, okay, cool. Oh, and then I was like, really cool. I like this. And I showed it to my husband. He's like, huh, why haven't you been doing that all along? I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why I did not do that before because I think it looks super cool. And I wish you guys could see it close up because there are gradations just because of what I use. Now, here is the teaser part. We're going to do this together real fast. I did three already, right? So I'm kind of doing like an arched thing. So I did three, and then I'm gonna do a separate thing for the assembly so you don't have to watch it all together. So I did three, um, and you can kind of see the softness of it. Now here's where I'm gonna explain, and this is gonna be more explained in future painting videos, but there are different ways to do painting. Now, alcohol inks are the preferred way and then do a coating on them. And I found for me, um, the problem with alcohol inks is they dry super fast and they are not cheap. Um, and they are kind of a pain in the neck to use. And um, yeah, I'm really selling them, huh? Uh, they do make a mess. So when you're going to use them, you better be ready to like have your paper towels out. I would wear gloves um, and just have everything ready. I'm going to do a little demo on, on these later. So this is one. I have two... I guess two boxes of these and the, the brand I like the best because they have because I love mixing colors because my mom was an artist and she used to teach me she's like okay you only need three colors in the entire world to make every color in the entire world except you want your contrast white and black too to shade it but you only need your primary colors right so you only need yellow blue and red then I found it having a good solid green like a Kelly green if you're going to do that it actually helps because it's really hard to get a good anyway that's my cheater color I get one. And I used to do like scientific illustrations of bugs. And, I, and the fun of it was just using just those colors. So I approached painting flowers that way too. I was like, oh, okay. So I got Pinata, which is a good brand. And it's very solid, basic colors. You know, like there's purple, there's magenta, there's, you know, there's nothing like, uh, for example, like let's, you know, there's red, there's blue. There's nothing like meadow, um, for example, or let's see, let's pick up a color here, red pepper, um, salmon that's actually one of more normal color names even this green one is called mojito <laughs> that's funny i didn't 
actually I haven't used that one. Um, honeycomb. So this brand is not pinata. This is uh, the Ranger alcohol inks and Everglades. And the reason I started buying these is Meadow. That's one of my favorite though. I do love Meadow. Um, is because they, um, you can see they're all kind of gummed up and stuff. Peach Bellini. Okay. Um, apparently I have someone who likes their drinkings. Oh, and latte. So they like their coffee and their alcohol drinks. Terracotta. Um, so anyhow, you get the gist. So they have a little more uncommon colors here with this Ranger inks. And normally I like to mix my colors. But when I first started, I realized that they dry so fast that unless you are super meticulous about recording um, exactly how many drops you put of each, which would never be me in a million years, um, you're not going to be able to recreate the color consistently. So you're going to have different colors batches. So it was better to kind of start with ones that were already kind of pre-mixed to a color I liked. But that meant I had to build up a collection, right, of these. And, um, I mean, I have tons. This is normally full. I have two full. I don't have tons. I have probably two and a half full ones of these, whatever this is, like 36 in there. But the problem is they're they're not cheap, right? I mean, I guess they're not horrible, but you kind of use a lot, and they do go bad. Uh-oh, we just lost our light again. Dang it. Hopefully lighten up. I gotta just get a better setup going on here. So, anyhow, let me see if I can turn it back on. Oh, it's over here. Why does that keep happening? Huh. Maybe we'll turn that off. Pausing, because I'm gonna fix something. Hang on. Okay, so I don't. I don't really need to fix my lighting setup. I know. Anyhow, so you get the idea. So the idea was to kind of start with ones that already had kind of cool colors to them. Uh, sandal, that's kind of cool, like sandalwood. And um, and then mix from there and have a little bit of a start with things. And a lot of these I could actually kind of grade up and mix on the flowers themselves. You can see there's like a subtle thing. And I already liked the colors, you know, so I could do something. Maybe I'd do a petal where I start with this. And then, and then kind of grade into this or something like that. You know, you can make those choices with these. So they already had pretty colors that were mixed. Um, now that is for a bigger job. Let me just put it that way. That would be total flower coverage. Like the ones I showed you, um, like the, these, these were done in that, the, um, the, um, saucer magnolias. Let me get this out of the way. So... That's kind of for a bigger job, and I'll do some of those later. We'll talk about those, but in general, if you're doing a quick and easy job, here's what I do. I use alcohol ink markers, still with paint brushes though. So we're gonna do one of those real fast. Um, there's a lot less mess, um, and they're actually better in multiple, multiple ways. One is that, um, I like to have a drier brush. You have to be real careful with those alcohol inks because if you do not get most, and this is also why you have a lot of waste in them because I try to always dap and keep it into the, um, right in the actual like the um, palette that I use. However, not all of it comes off. So I have to dab a bunch on onto my lovely uh, side paper towels. That being said, I use a lot of ink that way. But otherwise, if you don't do that, the ink will actually go into the holes of the beads and it makes it look weird and spotty. And sometimes you can't even get around that. So these are much drier. I don't know, brand. you just look on. Now, if you use the fancy ones, they might last longer and I'm sure they're refillable and all that stuff, um, but they're real expensive. So I probably should do that. But instead what I do is I go on Amazon and I get like, right now I'm waiting tomorrow, I'm supposed to get Twelve ninety nine for um, and with tax altogether fourteen dollars for eighty of eighty ones. That was kind of a good deal of that. That's kind of rare. Normally you have to kind of search around, but I put in alcohol ink markers. Okay, <coughs> sorry, <laughs> that was a funny cough. And so you get all kinds of colors. Now the problem with that is I end up using probably one third of the colors I get, and they do dry out fast. But holy cow, for that price, I just deal. Um, so, you know, they look like this. This is a different brand with the black one. You get all different kinds, you know. So this is a warm gray, blue gray, and I'll have to use the warm gray. Um, that was the one I used, I think, the warm gray, wasn't it? Huh, interesting. 
Um, so, yeah, not the black. I don't want to go stark black with this. So anyhow, you have a bunch of colors, and so I will actually do some demos of that later, showing you how you can even mix these on your petal. Because uh, I'll be honest, I think these I did with um, with the markers because I wanted to keep them really dry. And so they're drier on the marker. Okay, so here's how I would do this. Now I'm gonna do a quick little teaser, little dip video of how I'm gonna do it on these poppies before we assemble them. Now the assembly is gonna be a separate video, but anyhow, so I have three more left. I'll just do three with you real fast. Um, and to show you, so um, I use any, some, Super synthetic plasticky ones are horrible with these, so you probably don't want to go that direction. But any sort of, any kind of sort of even remotely natural feeling fiber, even nylon can be natural feeling. But I, I've thought I've gotten some good deals before and ended up with like really not good brushes, like plasticky. Those will be bad. Now this one I like a lot because, see, I'd already used it so much for dabbing and pushing in the beads that it already has a bit of a sort of a fluff to the end there. Um, it's getting kind of worn out looking, but that's actually better. Okay. So with these, you also don't, well, that's not true. I mean, if you're going to hold the flower, you should have a gl glove on your left hand. Let's be honest. So we're aiming for this. Now, the reason I want to do it beforehand is because I am going to have a pain in the neck trying to figure out how to spray these because I don't want to spray. I'm going to spray them with glossy because these are shiny beads, but I don't want to get that on my matte inner beads. So I'm going to have to put like aluminum foil or something around that somehow and bend them back up and it's going to be really annoying. Some it doesn't matter uh, if you do it before or after. It's the same amount of, of sealant to it, right? Um, these, well, those are, I'll show you guys those later, but those already kind of come that way. Um, anyhow, meaning like I, I, I fold them up like this because they're just a bunch of continuous loops. So um, there's not really an assembly per se, but I do them before I turn them into one huge hydrangea, that's for sure. Um, now, I thought that I had used the the warm gray. Let's give that a try. So I use the um, thicker side. And you want to be careful. So you're going to look here. This is, like I said, my fast little, oh, look what we can do. And you see if it picks up. You can see it on the brush. If it's picking up, let me make sure I'm in here. If it's picking up the pigment, you can even test it. You want it to be kind of dry. Now, the thing is, these do wear out. And I, now... With this one, I'm going for this shape, right? This little arched shape. So I'm going to kind of brush that around lightly because I want that feathery edge. Yeah, see, this one got a little bit tired out. I think I used that one too much. They do not last long, I got to warn you. Um, and I'm sure there is a... Re Let me try this one. I wasn't really going for blue-gray, but I think it actually came out kind of cool on the other one. So I dab it on here a little bit. Just get it on there. Um... And then again, test to make sure it's not too, okay? Now I'm going to do a little arch. Kind of feather it around just lightly. Kind of brushing it lightly around because I want that edge. And keeping in mind, right, I'm going, oh, okay, well, the top of the arch is at the bottom of the second row. Okay, bottom of the second row. And this is it for these. You do have to be a little careful. Like I said, this is like the least, this is the easiest like way you're ever gonna like the easiest sort of example of how to change your flowers with paint now i was wondering if i was as i was thinking about doing this for you guys like huh i wonder if you could just try it with a sharpie maybe you can oh one thing i should have told you too you should have next to you I use one of my little pinch bowls either some rubbing alcohol or i actually like using the hand sanitizer gel because uh this one because i'm only doing one color it doesn't really matter that's why I said it's like a super easy demo. Normally, if I'm mixing, like this will take, each of those was like four different colors, the ones on that that I just showed you, the ones next to the big mum. So I want to make sure that the inside gets really, really saturated, and then I'm just going to kind of lightly feather to have the outside just kind of grade into that. And as I'm rolling, sometimes it'll roll the beads. We do want to do the underside, especially on poppies, because they're going to be seen. So... Again, this is because I never just use one, not never, but I rarely use one color. You want to make sure you get that wire too. Now, obviously the underside isn't as tragically important as the front, as the top to get. It's good practice. In fact, if you're nervous about it, start with the underside. See, I'm just doing a light brushing there, light brushing. 
light, let me get this guy out of the way. So I'm doing a light brushing to, so that the top doesn't have a hard edge. That's kind of a feathery edge. And then really filling in the middle with this. And so you're actually using alcohol inks. It's the same things basically that's in the, um, in those dropper bottles. It's just as a marker. Now using it as a marker, not advised. <laughs> Trust me. Though sometimes when they get low, I will use the marker and then a paintbrush on top to blend it. The cool thing about these is you can actually, now I don't want to do a demo on that right now because it won't work here, but I actually do use this to blend. And when I do those gradations like this is about four different colors and I use the alcohol gel to blend it. And you can get blender like dilution from those particular brands like Pinata and Ranger. And those are good too. Those work well. The main thing is you're going to have to work with it because sometimes you don't want the runniness of it. Right. So, and the thing with this one, it's so dark, it's going to be hard to kind of, um, not make a big mess. See if you're trying to clean your brush. So right there it gets a little bit lighter. So if I wanted to, you could feather the edge even more with your alcohol ink. See how it picks it up a little bit and with your alcohol gel. Now you want to be real careful with that. You go, Oh, that's great. If I make a mistake, no, 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 no. This stuff is unforgiving. Kind of once you do that, you almost scar it and you can't put color down on top of it as much. So I probably shouldn't. With this, you can because I'm not doing kind of weird blending. But you want to be real careful. That's the other thing about these things. Not particularly forgiving. Okay. So let me just do one more to show you. Okay. So again, picking things up. Sometimes you just leave it in there. Sometimes I get really impatient. I jam it down in there. I'm like, there must be more left. Now. And again, you just kind of feather light your, just kind of feather so you have that edge. I'm really light, just a light little feather arch on it to get my border. Just nice to do that first so I know where I'm filling in, right? And I always, because I know kind of I'm going to go to the bottom of that V. That's what I chose to do on this one. So, and now I fill in the rest going up to it. And I don't want to fill in at the border because why um because it will make it look more solid and I want it to have that kind of feathery effect so this definitely I I was super stoked I was like oh that's awesome you know again not like oh, I'm so great I'm so smart more like duh why did I do that sooner <laughs> and so a lot of the stuff I do is like happy accident um or at least I like to think of it that way right because otherwise, this stuff can get real tedious. Um, unless you're kind of into things as you go. So now, like I said, as you do it, you can you know, kind of roll the beads. So you'll get like the underside. And that's okay. You can kind of roll them because you do want to get most. Now, once you um, put spray the sealant on it, though, the beads roll a lot less. So once you won't have to worry about like... But it doesn't matter if you do the underside. So see, now I did my little... I'm not sure how well this is going to translate. I think before I do a really like detailed painting video, I'm going to have to get a better setup. Because this is just rinky dinky, rinky dink. Um, okay, so make sure you get your edges. And then again, make sure you get your wire. Um, the sealant helps it stay on the wire, but of course with wire, it's really not going to stay super well if people are handling it too much. But, you know, hopefully they're not handling it too much. Um, so you're just filling in, right? You can see I'm doing my little wire here. And now, so that was my little, let's do a little teaser and you can see it. And again, this is, I love getting the tubes out. I mean, the, the droppers out and doing it full scale, but this actually keeps it nice, it's drier. So for a little thing like this, I would definitely use the markers. And if you're not sure yet, because it is a bit of an investment to get all those droppers, I don't know, I mean, maybe, it's like $12 for three of them. I guess it's not a million dollars, but come on. You know, if I got 36, that's, you know, that's, if it's $12 for three of them and I have 36 of them and what is that? 12 times 12, that's over a hundred. That's a lot of money. No, is that right? You'd think as a math teacher, I could do math right now, but I am exhausted. Um, yeah, the funny thing is I'm horrible at arithmetic. Yet I was a mathematician most of my life. So what are you going to do with that? Because arithmetic isn't math. One time I went to Reno with 
one of my very good friends and she's just, was we were like probably 22 and she was like my, an amazing artist still is like <laughs> funny as heck i'm gonna do one more and so we're there we're playing blackjack right at the table and i kept throwing down my cards going i busted i'm over and she's like sophie you have 21 I had to have the artist tell me I had 21. And then I couldn't exp then I couldn't blame it on the fact that I was old. <laughs> now I could be like, oh, I'm getting old. <laughs> so, um, yeah, then I didn't have any excuse. But anyhow, when you do math, you don't actually see numbers. I know that's going to sound weird. Trust me. Um, as a mathematician, you see very few numbers. Anyhow more on that later so so back to the matter at hand um quite an investment to get all those i got like you know i kept seeing colors i was like that's so cool and that one's cool and that one's cool and then you know it adds up and so you might not want to spend it over and because of the fact that like like it did say it's hard to mix them so I thought, you know, okay, I'll just get the basic set of pinatas, right? You know, which was like rainbows and, you know, like your basic, basic colors. And maybe they're like 20 colors and it wasn't very expensive. And they're fine colors. But the thing is, the mixing. Like I said, the mixing and the drying so fast. So um, this is a good way to see if you like it. Because I will, I have actually done whole petals just with markers, for sure. In fact, one of those saucer magnolias I did with just markers, I think. Because I, I'll be honest... I was too lazy to get out all the palette and all the stuff to clean it up. But then it, it takes so much ink that you just basically dry out an entire marker. Um, and then what are you going to do for the rest of them? So that's another reason why you wouldn't want to do whole um, flowers, like whole petals, complete change. So anyway, you get the gist. I ended up doing another one just for the heck of it because I was yammering on. But there it is. There's our little painting demo just with a little simple thing. So... You can go on and even get like a 60 pack on Amazon. I think I, oh, before I saw the like 80, which I think is like a special deal or whatever, they had like a, I saw one first, like 40 for 10, you know, and that's fine to start with. Um, but again, you're going to need, you're going to need a paintbrush with it and you might want to get the alcohol blender, but if you don't want to, you can just use rubbing alcohol. It's fine. There's only a little, there's a set, there's a little bit of a difference we'll talk about later when we get into the in-depth painting part on their alcohol blending solution that makes it slightly nicer to use, but slightly. I mean, I like the alcohol gel a lot of times for blending markers on the actual um, petal because you have more control over it, right? That whole idea, again, you don't want to, you don't want to have too much liquid on your petals unless you know what it's going to do because it will suck right up into um, I'll just go right on up into the bead hole and then it looks weird. Um, and we don't want that, but you can do different things with this. Now, here's the other teaser. I'll do another quick one fast. This is going to be a hard one. Darker it is, the harder it is to, you definitely want to clean your brush. You can see why this thing got beat up. <laughs> like clean your brush. Poor thing. <laughs> But actually, like I said, it made it easier because to use because it's feathery so it actually helps with those feathery edges. So now we've got this cool one and I'm going to do this. I'm going to assemble separate. And the other thing is you get used to it is like that might look kind of big. But actually, once you put um, all the centers in, you don't even see it that much because it's the same size. It went up to the same place. So you want to consider that. And those are things to learn with it. Now, if I were, I'll show you really quick. I'm wondering if I have... Um, I guess I can use one of these. What the hey? I'll use one of my hydrangea ones. Um, I'm going to show you two real quick, just for fun. Again, along the teaser line of today. Oh, um, I, and you want to clean those out. I normally just use a Kleenex or something, you know, once they, because that'll just dry up too. Um, but I don't want to keep using that one, obviously, because now it's all really dark. Um, let's do like a, I don't know, let's see what I can grab super fast. Uh, apparently I can grab pinks really fast. So, oh, I hope that means that they, they're not dried out, though. I probably used them. So, you know, there's a lot of pinks that come in the bigger set. I have a whole shoebox size bin over here. Um, but the idea with these, and this is totally unscripted and unthought out, so good Lord, let's hope it works. Because um, I'm about to really embarrass myself if it doesn't. 
So disclaimer, did not plan on doing this, but it's so much fun to use. So you can use these markers on something small. I'll use this kind of bright pink one here. So I want to show you how you can use the alcohol too. Um, and you can decide, and, and I will do a more involved video. So see how I'm doing like a little bit, and, it's, and because it's drier, it's so much drier, trust me. You can, um, you have so much more power over it. So I do, again, but I, if you're going to do a big thing, you're going to run out of ink. So let's suppose I just start with, um, say this, just doing a little middle, a little middle bit on there. A middle bit. Got them all now. Um, okay, this is called Azalea Purple. I don't know. I mean, they're like, you know, from other countries and stuff, so they make up kind of funny names sometimes. I'm like, that's an interesting azalea purple you know i think they're just trying to sound pretty which is cool but sometimes some of the colors are like not at all what it sounds like it should be so you, the caps are pretty good though in terms of like this part i mean that's pretty good it's close enough you get the gist sometimes you know always check first i i've used so many that i know what they are so let's suppose i'm going to try to grade that one out so i would do that first I'm going to chop this off the end if this do not work. <laughs> and so get as much ink off of there as you can. You should really get a lot off. Sometimes you want to keep some on because you want it to kind of blend up like that. And then I get just a light little light bit. Just kind of put it in there and then brush. You're going to experiment with this. There's, I can tell you kind of like what direction to go in, but you're going to have to feel it, right? So just with a light brushing on it. And now, look, I can pull that color up. You can pull that color up with just that amount on there. And that's that's with hand sanitizer gel. I had it sitting on my table, you know, as most many of us do these days. When I first started doing these, and I was like, oh, I'll use that instead of... And I actually like it because there's more control over it. So now I can pull this up. You know, pull that color up. You can do it in the bottom too. Pull that color up. Sorry, let me make sure I'm on the screen. So you can see how you can kind of grade it yourself. And the cool thing is, I want to flatten these down so you can see them a little bit better. So you kind of get an ombre effect and you can push back down if it's getting too much, right? You can push it back down into the center, kind of work it a little bit, squish it around. You can have a very dry brush with just a little hint of the alcohol on it still. And now what's cool, um, is say like, I don't know, maybe I don't even want to grade pink because I grade pinks enough. So let's, let's say I want to do like, I don't know. I want to bring a, let's do a green. Oh God, I'm going to, the problem is all the ones that are in this, all the ones that are close to me are probably ones that I've already kind of worn out. Just realized. So let's get this a little bit cleaner. But again, I'm going to grade it down anyway, so it's okay. Let's see. I don't know if there's, if I'm going to, I have a feeling I've, yeah, I might have used this one to, to distraction but you can do another cold color up here and just have a hint of it let's see yeah i've used that one i like that one a lot let's try another one real fast why do i keep putting it back up sometimes the other side works and so i might use it for something else like the fine line side because remember there's a fine line okay this is not my favorite green and some of them kind of come already kind of slightly dried out because again you're you're not I'm not getting the highest quality one because I'm like, I'm not going to spend $90 on that, you know, but maybe I should at this point. See, now that one clearly, that's actually means it's pretty um, yeah, saturated. So you can see now I put that little, little bit of, oh, I kind of like these two together, actually. I don't know if I would do anything with them, but there it is. So I'm putting a little on the tip there, putting a little bit on the tip. You know, get the little backside there, just right on the very edge. And this is more exaggerated than I would normally do. It's it's kind of fun to try it though. But I always make extra because you're gonna you're not gonna these things are they're hard to control. So again, now that I've got my edge done, dab, and I'm gonna pull that green down into the pink just lightly don't go all the way to the top because you want to keep the top being concentrated 
or you want to keep it darker at least. So I guess you can get kind of in there, but be just really mindful that you're doing little strokes and just pulling it from the edge, right? Pulling it from the edge down in there. And then it kind of blends with it. I love when it blends with it. See, now I'm touching that top one because it did get too dark, you know? And then I'll go, ah, oh, maybe I don't want that. And then, because I do like things to look kind of vintage-y, so I'm going to pull that green down. Pull that green down. So now we, I'm just making this up as we go. I'm literally just whatever marker's closest to me in the bin. Now, what I do a lot, too, is once I have kind of like the base here and I go, oh, that's kind of bright, which a lot of people like bright, and that's awesome. But I'm always kind of looking for that, like, kind of faded. I almost use the word dingy, but that sure isn't a good word to use, right? Because I don't want it to be dingy, per se. But I do want it to be kind of faded. You can leave them open a little bit, but of course, like I keep saying, they dry out. So then maybe I might go and get myself, um, I don't know, a gray. And these come with a lot of different grays. Warm grays, cool grays of different, you know, intensity. So I'm just grabbing. This one's kind of a medium intensity blue gray let's see how that works okay oh i think i forgot to wipe so i might take a gray <laughs> this is where i'm gonna be like and this should be where i clip the video off um just to just to dampen that down a little bit you almost can't tell but it just makes it a little bit see you can see the difference though kind of just gives that a little more dimension to that pink too i kind of like that so just a light brush of it and you can see the difference, right, with that. And you go back open, mm, that's too much. Now, like I said, beware. You can't really fix everything with going over with the alcohol gel. You'll learn that. But so now I gave it a little bit more dimension and a little bit less like kind of like just, you know, it's a little less tacky, let's say. I don't know. It's not tacky. Because people do like bright colors. I'm just, like I said, I'm always drawn to sort of the vintage sort of feel to things. Um. You know, just make them look like they're vintage, even if they're not. So you can use um, a little bit of a gray one there. And that's why I'm telling you, like, we've already, in my little make-believe world of doing stuff, we've used uh, azalea pink, we've used a green, and we've used, we've only done three colors. For me, that's pretty, but this is, I'm showing you how with the markers, you can actually um, paint right onto the flower itself, Right? and use the alcohol blending solution, which I would be really careful with that, or alcohol gel, because you have a lot more control over that and it won't run into the center hole, and um, use that to shade. And so that one's kind of interesting. I don't think I would ever, you know, I don't, but I'll put it into my world of misfit things and it will show up at some point somewhere, because I don't hate it, I just don't necessarily wouldn't be my maybe first choice and the alcohol gel too it more than the um blending solution gives a little bit of a, a sheen to it which i like too it makes it a little more iridescent it's pretty cool um what you can do so basically let's do a before and after now in just a few seconds we've turned this flower into this flower and you can see a huge difference there and they're kind of pretty um should we do something weird? Let's do something more striking. Let's put this color. I don't know what it is, but I always think this is one that never looks like I think it's going to. Oh no, the brilliant blue is not so bad. I'm this I'm tempting fate on this one. Whew. I want to put this on the center center bead. Let's see. Um, this is probably where it's like too much in the thing, you know. It's like when I cook, you know, I'm trying to follow a flavor profile. My husband's like, we're running out of this. Just throw it all in. I'm like, that's going to make it a completely different thing. Um, okay, we're going to put a little bit right in the middle there. I'm not hating it. I'm just bumping it right there in the middle there. Doing little dots to keep it kind of light. Hmm. I do not hate that at all. Um, again, happy accidents. Because these are literally just the colors that are right there next to me. I didn't plan it. Now, you could leave it like that. It actually kind of looks cool and very brilliant. <laughs> yeah, this is brilliant blue. Which is probably why I said that in my brain. I'm acting like I came up with that on my own. And it's a coincidence. Okay. Now, we can just blend lightly. Because I actually like the... In fact, I probably would have just left it. 
but then you experiment. That's why you make a couple extras. Or you just use a much lighter one. Hmm. Look at that. So we have four colors. I don't know, how, but I think that actually looks pretty darn cool. I like the green that I went out to the edge with. I think we did a good job. We make a good team. I know that sounds weird when I say that because you guys aren't actually here, but making these videos motivates me to look at things differently. So I think we are a team in this. Okay, so I'm putting a little gray in the middle one there. I'm not sure I like that, so I'm going to go back. You got to be real careful. You, there's a lot of mistakes you cannot fix with alcohol inks. Yeah, they are unforgiving. Let's just put it that way. Um, but if I notice I want a little more, if I wiped up too much, I just put a little dot more. There we go. Now, and now let's see if with a totally dry brush, you can even pull it back just the wet ink itself without diluting it. You can just pull it back, feather it back a little bit with a totally dry. <laughs> yeah, this poor brush, huh? This isn't even the original one I was jamming. This is, these are my two favorite brushes, these poor things. This is a smaller one, equally as abused. But, um, so getting it real, real soft and feathery and just using the wetness of the ink itself against, and it makes an even really softer feather to it. So that's how you can do um, small areas. You can do larger ones, but you can't do that much because, again, you, these don't last forever by any you know, shot, but go, you know, find that 60 or 80 pack. I can't remember what I got, um, you know, for 12 bucks, 12 99 and give it a try, you know, um, and see what you think, because you can do these kind of fun things with it. And there's a lot of control things that you'll have to kind of learn what, you know, works and what doesn't, but they almost always look pretty darn cool. And I think, look at that. I think that came out pretty awesome. I don't know if I'm holding it up there as well as I... Where are you at, camera? But there it is. And I actually like that kind of weird green on the side. What green is that? Vivid green. I would not call that vivid green. That is... That's what I'm... Like, look at that color. That is not a vivid green. But it's a cool green. I like it. It's kind of a minty, sagey green in a weird way. So... Just with the colors that were closest to me, you can just do even totally weird colors. You can do all, you know, you can do a similar color gradation or you can do colors that have nothing to do with each other and make them grade into each other. So you have a lot of options with these. And um, they're pretty fun. They're pretty fun. And so I'm going to go back to assembling our poppy, but I have to spray these first. So we're going to put these all together. And now that we did a little paint with that we're gonna have one that looks like that when we're done so hope that was kind of fun to look at even if you and don't let it do that because that's a bunch of wasted ink dang it i should be paying attention yeah you gotta be careful i do that all the time i find sea fold towels are definitely the best because they flat and you need a thick but we'll do more when this was not supposed to be an instructional video about it but it should be even thicker than this if you're if you were doing it out of the dropper you should have, a, have at least half inch thick of these so c folds you can get pretty cheap and you go through a lot um so it's a good idea so anyhow because they'll saturate and you use them a lot and the bottom looks kind of cool too interesting and so there's our little flower that we painted along with our petals and one of my violets is in the wrong place how did you get over there this one started as gray that's pretty cool. Started as this color. So, anyhow, um, and I think I did these with marker because I was just going to do a little bit with each marker and I wanted to keep them really dry. For the ABs, I really like the way the markers do the best because the drier it is, the more you get this sort of iridescence off of it. Um, but, again, they have both have their place. They're both alcohol inks, so they have equal issues. But otherwise... Go have some fun with it. Give it a try. And we will do ones that are more painted. I'm going to do a lily one to at least show you how um, we can get those lilies in the middle. Um, and you can kind of create your own grading on lilies. And make your own tiger lilies, too, because you can put dots on there with them. Um, I've done that. You know, which is hard to do, harder to do with 
the individual beads. You wouldn't think so, would you? I tried it with individual beads before because you'd be like, huh, the dots are about the size of a bead. Yeah, but it just doesn't quite, I don't know. I mean, it didn't quite, quite translate. Anyhow, so there you go. Oh, here's my hydrangea bit. And have fun with it. And I will see you for poppy assembly. At least in my mind, that's what ne what's next. Almost looks like it's tie-dyed, huh? That's kind of cool. Tie-dyed flowers. I'm looking to the side so I can see it. Okay, so that's the end of our quick look. Oh, well, not as quick as I thought it was going to be. Quick look at um, painting flowers. Awesome. How do I turn this thing off? I'm just kidding. I know. I think I do.